Hey, fourth graders. So our video today, this is math 2-9. I'm gonna get right to sharing. I am so excited for today. We've been looking at so many methods in math, so many different ways that we are breaking up those two by one multiplication equations, those larger equations. And today is finally the day. It's the shortcut method day. This is where I'm going to actually show you that long multiplication, kind of the old school way probably your parents know, the way that I was taught originally. And I know a lot of you know it already, but we're gonna make sure that we understand it. We're gonna be practicing a lot. But please know that when you see these equations, you can still use an area model. You can still draw your rectangles and you can still break up your tens. When we get to hundreds later this week, you can still draw them for hundreds. We're going to be practicing that. But today I am gonna show you how we use the shortcut method to numerically just solve 27 times four. And we're gonna do multiple practices today, okay? We'll also do them when we're live during math practice, okay? So you are welcome to be in your spiral math notebooks. You are welcome to be doing this with me. You could do it on your dry erase board to try to get the hang of it, or you can watch me so that you're ready for our lesson in math today when we meet, okay? So if, in, if you're in your spiral and you wanna label it, this is 2-9 shortcut method. Today's date is 10-19-20. Here's number one. So when we do the shortcut method, we are making sure that our equations are lined up like this. We have our larger number on top, our single digit number, our smaller number on the bottom. It's lined up with the ones and our multiplication sign of course is here with a line to separate the answer from the equation, okay? The way I like to think about the shortcut method, just as before, the four is in charge. It's that single number and it is going to multiply just like it did in our area model to both the tens and the ones. Just gonna go in a little bit different order. So if I was breaking this up into an aerial mo area model really quickly, this is what it would look like. I hope that looks super familiar to you. Feel free to still continue to use these, okay? It's just like multiplying this out and this out, but now we're gonna do it a little bit different. Shortcut. Okay, the four is in charge. I'm gonna draw arrows because the first multiplication I'm thinking about is four times seven. I'm imagining that two is not even there. I know four times seven, seven times four is 28. Like in addition, the eight goes down and those two tens are gonna get brought up to the number next door. And I'm putting it in a box. I'm gonna hold that two up there, okay? Next, the four has to go out and multiply to the two. So in my mind, I'm thinking four times two. I know four times two is eight. I've got this number up here. Even though I'm doing multiplication, I'm still going to add those two. So eight plus two more is 10. There are no more numbers to carry groups to, so I write the whole thing down, and my answer is 108. Pretty simple, right? Let's check it real quick with a simple area model. I know four times 20, four times two again is eight. Put the zero on and four times seven is 28. I add my two products together. Eight, 10, we checked out. Awesome. 
this is a little faster. We went slow, but this doesn't take as much as this. So you're gonna get to decide how you like to solve our two by one multiplications, okay? Let's try another one. This was number one. We're gonna continue with our shortcut. This time, I'm not going to draw the area model, but please know you can use that to check yourself if you like, okay? Here we go. This time, we've got 43 times six. So again, I'm making sure that my larger number is on top, my single digit is on the bottom, and it's lined up in the ones place, okay? I'm gonna circle the six, because that tells me the six is in charge. I'm gonna pretend that the four isn't there, and I'm gonna draw this arrow. You do not have to draw this arrow. You can, I'm just doing it to show you. I'm thinking six times three, I know that's 18. My eight goes down, my one gets brought up over the four. I'm gonna save that for later. Now my six needs to multiply diagonally to the four. Six times four, that's 24. I've got this extra one, I need to add it. 24 plus one is 25. I write the whole thing down because there are no more numbers. My answer is 258. Okay, let's try another one. This is the shortcut method. Let's try 64 times five. All right, again, I like to circle this when I'm learning just so that I know where to start and what number is in charge. I'm also gonna continue to draw the arrows for you to see. I'm first thinking five times four. I know that's 20. My zero goes down and I have to bring my two up. You don't have to put it in a box. I'm doing that to show you, but you can if you'd like. Next, I'm going diagonally. Five times six. I know that's 30 plus the two makes 32. 320. Okay, let's try two more for practice. This is number four. Let's use the shortcut method and let's do 87 times six. Get some of our bigger facts in there. Again, everything is lined up. The six is in charge. I'm thinking up and down first, just one simple equation. Seven times six, I know that's 42. I bring my four up. Next, my six must up go diagonally, six times eight. I know that's 48 plus four more. 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. My product is 522. All right, number five. This time I'm not gonna do the arrows or the circling. Let's give it a try. Here's the shortcut method. Let's do 49 times six. It's all lined up, okay. I'm starting here, six times nine is 54. The four goes down, I'll bring the five up. I'll go diagonally next, the six is in charge. Six times four is 24, plus five more is 29. So my product is 294. All right, you guys, just a little bit on the shortcut method. We will continue to talk about and practice this method as we move on. We're also gonna be getting bigger with our math this week. We're going into the hundreds, so get ready for that. I can't wait. I'm gonna show you your homework real quick. Today, your assignment is 2-8. You're on page 43 in your homework book. Let's look at the directions real quick. It says you may use any method that we've learned so far to solve. You may sketch a rectangle if you need to.
that means you do not need to. If you like the shortcut method, you may rewrite these, starting with the larger number on top, lining it up, and you may rewrite to solve. I do need to see your work. I don't want to just see answers, okay? If you need more room, use your spiral notebook or a scratch piece of paper. And if you want to continue area models, please feel free. Do your rectangle, you can label, then you're breaking up your tens. So that's six tens is 60 plus three left over. You can do your partial products, add them together to get your final product. Okay, so any method. Down below, number 10 and 11 again, you are just solving. You're gonna read them. Feel free to highlight or underline important information. This is where you're gonna do your pictures or your equations, and then you'll label your answer on the lines, okay? You are also doing page 44 on the back. That's your review, okay? Let's look at those. The top part, numbers one through four, you're gonna actually subtract. We don't want you to forget how to do that. Then you're going to use the inverse. You're going to use addition to check, okay? There isn't enough room here, so what I might need to do is to get my spiral. So for example, let me get to a page real quick. If I'm doing number one, I'm gonna rewrite this. I cannot do this subtraction in my head and I don't expect or want you to do it either. So I'm gonna rewrite it. I'm gonna be thinking about my place value. There's my problem, okay? Now I'll do the subtraction. Nine minus one is eight. Five minus two is three. Oop, can't do that. I have to ungroup. 14 minus nine is six and five minus zero is five. One, two, three, 5,638. So that's my answer. Don't forget step two, my check. Remember, if I've gone with subtraction this way, the inverse, the opposite direction, I can use addition. That means the difference plus the other number will get my total. So here I go, 500, or sorry, 5,638 plus 921 should equal that. Let's try it, 5,638 plus 921, making sure everything is nicely lined up. Eight plus one is nine, three plus two is five, Six plus nine is 15, I made a new group, and five plus one is six. Ooh, something did not go well, did it? Hmm, what happened here? 6,459, I did some math wrong, didn't I? I believe it's right here. Ooh, good catch, see this is why we do this. That should have been a five, not a six, which means this. I'm so glad that happened. Okay, there it is. This. You see, this is why we check. I'm so glad that happened. Now, whoops, I'm getting confused. 6,459. I'm human too. I make mistakes. There it is. That's why we check ourselves. So I hope that makes sense. You'll do the problem and then you'll need to check with the inverse using addition. All right. The next part, you're using the algebraic notation to solve each one, right? So remember what that is. It just means that you're breaking that part up. So it would look like this. We keep this on the outside four times 90 plus three. And we'll continue to do this. So the four multiplies to the 90 
four and nine, 360 plus four times three is 12. And when we put those together, we get 372. Okay, so I'll let you do that one. You can write your answer on the line. Okay, all right. Finally, stretch your thinking. I never talk about these because they are the challenges for the day. And I want you to always give it a try. Don't leave those blank. All right, you guys, that's it for your little math lesson and I'll see you soon.